In this video, we're going to be going over how you can add validation to a form. So I created a new component to do this called validation form, and I'm rendering that in the app now. So this is similar to the form that we built before, but now I'm taking three fields, the name, email, and password, and I simplified it a little bit and I made them all input fields. So we have three inputs, and now you'll notice there's a few different changes or things you haven't seen before. The first is I'm adding a new prop on them that's called placeholder. So what placeholder does is that's just a string so we can see which uh, input field matches with what. And then also this input here, I gave a type of password. And so what that does is when I type the password, it makes it black or hidden. So that's important to do. And then uh, everything else is the same. We still have a single function to handle the change of these inputs. And then we are console logging the state um, when it's submitted. So now what I'd like to do is how do we validate this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more fields to my state. So this is going to be called name error, which is going to be a string. And I'm going to do the same thing with the email and the same thing with the password. So what these are are strings that represent the error message that we should display to the user uh, for this field. So now I can actually display that error just below the input field. Um, so here I'm going to say this this dot state dot uh, and we'll do name error and now by default we're not going to see anything it's because it's an empty string but now if I have uh, name is empty we're gonna see it's gonna be displayed right there and now we can make some changes to this like for example we can style this red And now that looks more like an error message. The font size is huge, so we could make it a little bit smaller if we wanted to, like, I don't know, maybe 12. And that looks a little bit better. And now we can display the error below the input field like that. Now we don't always want to display this error message. We only want to display it if this actually has an error, which is pretty much doing it by default um, right here. So if it's an empty string or not. Um, it's pretty much being displayed. Ad additionally, we could do we could conditionally render this, so we could say this dot state dot name error. If that's a thing, render it. Otherwise, render null. Um, we don't really need to use conditional rendering right here because it's already not going to render anything if it's blank. So that's another option we could do though. And so I could copy this and I could paste this here, um, and I could do the same thing for the email error and for the password error. So now, if I'm typing stuff and then I submit, we're not gonna see the error, the errors don't pop up. So what I'd like to do is, when the user submits the form, I wanna validate and show any errors that exist. So I'm gonna create a function called validate that does just that. Um, and here I'm gonna say uh, const is valid is returned by calling this.validate. So if it's valid, there's no errors in there, then go ahead and console log the state. So in this validate function, we're gonna check if there's any errors. So I'm just going to copy these three right here. And I'm going to say let and let so I'm gonna just set them to empty, empty errors or empty strings here. So here are our three error messages or errors that could possibly occur. And now I'm just gonna add if statements. So I'm gonna say if this dot state dot email dot includes an at sign. So we're gonna check if this includes an at sign. So why don't we just start with the uh, email error at first. So if it does not include this at symbol, then we'd like to say email error is equal to invalid email. And then what I can do is I can say if email error, then we're gonna say this.setState email error. So we're now setting it to whatever we got and then we're gonna say return false. So it wasn't valid. So now if I were to inspect this, 
we can console log what happens. So here's me putting in some random text um, and here's it with a at sign. So if I submit, um, I'm not sure what happened, if it even uh, should at least console log this. And the reason for that is we forgot to say return true at the bottom. So if we don't hit any errors and validate, we're gonna say return true. So here is a valid one. Submit, and now we can see our data. What happens if I get rid of that and try submitting though? We now see an invalid email. But now if I were to example, hit the at sign and say submit, uh, you'll notice that the error message is still there and still showing and the user may not know whether it worked or not. Uh, so after we handle a submit, we want, for example, to clear the form. So clear form. So the way to clear the form, and by the way, we only want to clear the form if it's valid and the user submitted it. So to clear the form, what we can do is just set the state to the default values. So I'm going to create a object up here that's going to be called the default state. And I'm going to copy this, paste it here. And I'm going to set the state here. And maybe a better name instead of default state is initial state. And so we're going to set the state to the initial state. And then to clear the form, we're just going to say this dot set state. And now set it to the initial state. So now when the user signs up here, if they have an error, submit. Um, well, actually, that was no error. Sorry. Let's do an error. Uh, so we have invalid email and then they type a good one and they submit it's now cleared and submit So that's kind of the functionality you might see in a form And so that's pretty much the the way to be able to do that at least th this is one way and now we can add as many error messages as we want and we can add it for both the name and the password so maybe we want to for example say if not this or if this dot state dot name is less than one or we could just say if it's not a thing, so if it's empty, we can say name error, name cannot be blank. And then we can say if there's a name error or there is a, sorry, if there's an email error or a name error, we're going to set state. Um, and I'm not sure if I've actually shown this before. This might be weird syntax. I forgot about that. So um, you'll notice how I'm setting the object here. I'm not saying uh, email error is equal to email error. So you'll notice this is redundant. In cases where you have the same, the key is equal to a variable of the same name, you can just uh, reduce that to this and it's equivalent. So if you're unaware, that's, that's a uh, JavaScript thing that you can do. All right, so let's take a look at this. So if I leave the name blank, I put in a good email and put in a password. We try submitting. Now the name cannot be blank. Let's go ahead and make the email bad. Now we get an invalid email. Now let's type some stuff, try submitting. Now we just get an invalid email. Um, and then we could do the same thing for the password if we wanted to and add another validation for the password. But I think this gives you guys a good idea of how you can handle errors at least one way. We can just create a function to validate and you can add any checks that you want here, see if you get any errors, update the state with error. So this is pretty much the technique is you'll store any kind of errors in your state. By default, you're gonna have no errors and then you just update the state with any errors that occur down the line and then you can display them here.